are you, Star? You're supposed to be following me. What's the matter with you? I don't like people who dawdle. Come on, tighten up. I'm sorry, Red Leader. I'm afraid I'm a little ill. I mean, I'm a little groggy. That's what happens when you get Blotto in the mess. Close up, Star. Not on my boat. Have you ever seen a tailplane chewed off by a propeller? No, sir. It's a nasty sight. And the props are nasty sight as well. They fall off, you know. They become ill, like you. I've been checking the results of the pilot's tests on aircraft recognition. Very depressing. Half of them are imbeciles. Don't believe it. They should know the difference between ours and theirs, don't you think? It's different in the sky. The old man's giving a bit of stick to young star. He got two out of ten in his test. Odd you being in the Air Force. I think you should try flying. It's unnatural. It would encourage the chaps if the new intelligence officer had actually been in an aeroplane. Now let's get a decent landing. Speed 160 and falling. Under carriage select the lever down. Now. Your speed is 135 and falling. Height 700. We're on our final approach. Flaps down. Charge all of you! What are you, German spies? Do you know how much I spit for a cost? He'll calm down. Really? Can I help you, sir? How can you help? Just go away. There's a ladder coming, sir. Stop, young ladder! You'll be okay, sir. Are you all right, sir? Excuse me, sir, if you don't mind it. cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note, stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now, that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. You can imagine what a bitter blow it is to me that all my long struggle to win peace has failed. Now may God bless you all and may he defend the right for it is evil things that we shall be fighting against. Brute force, bad faith, injustice, oppression, and persecution. It was a traffic accident rather than a flying accident. But I just thought I'd put you in the picture, sir. 
And there's the question of a new seer. How can I find a seer on Sunday? On this particular Sunday? Yes, sir, I certainly do know there's a war on. Worst time ever. The Luftwaffe don't have these problems, apparently. Well, they're Germans. Who was that, sir? I was just talking to our intelligence officer, sir. Yes, sir, mum's the word. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. The whole squadron's on alert. Goodbye, sir. Well. Oh, yes, um, senior pilot takes over. Is young Fanny Barton good enough to lead us into war? First class chap, his people farm sheep in Australia. Bit dull, though, don't you think? Oh, Fanny, we were just talking about you. Come in. You're going to be acting CO for a while. Oh, am I? I can hardly fill the shoes of Squadron Leader Ramsey. I don't know about that, but one of your first tasks is to write to the old man's next of kin. Well, I'm not very good at writing letters, particularly that sort of thing. Tell them he exhibited a complete disregard for his own personal safety. That's the formula, as I remember it. But he fell off his aeroplane. We don't want to tell them that, do we, sir? Fanny, you can give me the envelope. Top secret. Needs your signature. Thank you. <clears throat> well, you all know what's happened. It's a sad day for us. But an historic day as well. We seem to be missing some pilots. They went to the pub, sir. May I point out that this squadron is on active service? We're on alert. A and B flights are on a five-minute standby, and nobody goes to the pub. Particularly this day. They heard the Prime Minister's speech, didn't they? That's why they went to the pub. Well, somebody should have stopped them. Well, as I was saying, Hitler's got about well, about 2,000 bombs. Come on, you chaps. You should be up here at a briefing. They didn't tell us. I want you in here right away. What have I done? Flying Officer Stickwell, I'm your acting CO, and I've given you an order. That goes for the lot of you. Look, I want to make this quite clear. This is not a glorified Playboy flying club. Don't sit down when I'm talking to you. We thought we were on release. Well, you're wrong. Hornet Squadron is available. That means we've got to be ready to take off in whatever time the controller says. All right, sit down. Incidentally, I, I wouldn't imagine the Luftwaffe is carousing in their local beer keller. A and I'm pretty sure the Polish Air Force hasn't got time for a laugh or a joke. There's a good reason for having a drink. <laughs> Never so bloody stupid, Molly. Hasn't it sunk in yet? We're at war. The games are finished. And we may be into action sooner than you think. I have here some top secret documents. Useful Polish terms and phrases for British air crew. Each pilot must memorize these phrases in 24 hours. Oh, I knew that would get you going. All right, that's all for the moment. I don't know. I felt like a scoutmaster. Nothing wrong with that. Moggy has a bad influence on Sticky. Oh, they're all the same. Let's face it, fighter pilots are an odd lot. They're a bit mad, if you ask me. Well, I'm not mad. Well, I wonder. They've had a year practicing for this war. Now it's come, they're thrilled to bits. Thrilled? Bloody right. They're just itching to be let loose on some jerry bomber. They're not policemen or defenders. Different attitude. They want to shoot some sort. I mean, they didn't join the St. John's Ambulance Corps, did they? <laughs> what about you, Uncle? Were you a bit mad as well? Well, I suppose I must have been. I was bloody lucky, I can tell you that. Well, not mad, sort of eccentric. What I'm saying, Fanny, look here is that when it comes to the push, you'll probably find that you're a good deal madder than you think.
You done your Polish tests? Lost mine. They're secret. What are they going to do? Put me in the Tower of London? I don't even want to speak to a Pole. And if they can't speak the King's English, sod them. Let's have a look. Where is the Pox Hospital? Doesn't say that, does it? Should. Silly man. Haven't written your name on it. I'll get a colossal bollock in for that. Anthony Eden. Ready? Studying your Polish. Good. Bomber Command have dropped leaflets on Hamburg and Bremen. They should drop modern. Ready, room. On our way. Let's try and get a Jerry Bomber instead, eh? Approximately over Foulness Point. Angel 7, over Cowslip. Yes, the Red Leader, this is Cowslip. 10 plus bandits approaching Thames Estuary. Steer 150, make Angels 5, over. Understood, Cowslip. Keep tight. They're aiming at London. Rather well. If you got a fast kill, do you realize that? Hornick on a fast kill. Bloody incredible show. <laughs> I winged an ME 109. Hold on, I got him in the bomb. Well, there were plenty of them, you know. One of them even had a go at me. Bloody cheat. What happy warriors. Should I be dashing to the phone and telling group about your exploits? One Junkers 88 destroyed, another damaged, and we returned fire to several Messerschmitt 109s. Outnumbered. Citation, Skull. Gongs for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Messerschmitts, are you sure? We were there, Skull. I simply question the word Messerschmitt. Why? 
As I'm sure you know, the Messerschmitt has a range of about 400 miles. Thus, it has an operational radius of some 200 miles. Are you with me? You've got a beautiful speaking voice. <laughs> Thank you, Morgie. Mathematics is not my forte, but as we know, the nearest German airfield is at least 400 miles away. How on earth were they going to get home? Simple. They had extra long-range fuel tanks. Mm, disposable ones. Unlikely. Well, maybe they took off from an aircraft carrier. The German Navy has no aircraft carriers. Are you calling us liars? My dear boy, would I imply such a thing? Come on. You probably didn't study this at Oxford, Cambridge, or Harrods, or wherever it was. Good Lord. It's not bloody dry rot, you know. Another two feet, and he'd have lost his left bollock. <laughs> Oh dear, I will phone group immediately. I'll tell them about the Junkers 88. Whatever you say. Are we going to have you for the rest of the war? Unless I get a better offer from Goering, old boy. Damn fine show. Thanks, Uncle. Quite remarkable. First scrap, a hun down, two possibles, no losses. Just shows we can do it. Yeah, may I make a suggestion? Perhaps a thrash tonight. Make a fuss of it. I've always said it. In fact, it was my CEO in the last two. Always said. It's all done by kindness. Probably right. Have you got a couple of seconds? A chap in my office. A bit of a complaint. If you could just say hello. What's it all about? Now, sir, this is Flight Lieutenant Bob. He's our acting CO. Well, there's one, there's another, and that's the third. I beg your pardon? There's a letter to the Secretary of State for Air, one to my MP, and that's the National Farmers Union. I'm sorry, I don't quite know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, that's a bloody problem. You don't know. You don't care. They rob us blind, don't they, bloody rat? Well, roll on, Hitler, that's what I say. Sir, if you could just explain the nature of the... Four problem. of them in a car, driving across my cornfield. You ought to see the damage, drunk and all. I want them arrested. They were fighting against Germans half an hour Well, that's ago. your problem, isn't it? Don't you realise there's a war on? What spares? What forms? I don't know. You'd better come over here. Well, I must say, Keith, they've got a nerve with their bloody cornfields. Mm. Here are the Polish tests, incidentally. I'm afraid they're not natural scholars. I haven't even tried. Group, not at all happy about those long-range Jerry fighters and the Junkers. I told you, we engaged several aircraft. Rather important. Our side suffered some losses in the engagement. How many? One pilot killed, one Blenheim destroyed, several wounded. The funny thing is, no bombs were dropped on London, no German aircraft were seen to fall in the Thames estuary area. The Spears depot is only 30 miles from here. I've tried. No form, no spares. You need a bloody form to get a form. I know there's a bit of a flap on, but group intelligence need more information about your bombers. I've told you everything about that. For example, did you observe return fire from the German gunners? I don't know. No. Possibly. Did you notice the markings on the aircraft? They were silhouettes. How the hell could I notice that? I'm sorry, Fanny, this is my job. Look, can you help me? I've got two spits unserviceable. I don't know. All in squadron. It's like bloody Piccadilly Circus in here. You're from the National Farmers Union, I suppose. As it happens, I do farm. In Heritage. But I'm squadron leader Rex, your new CM. Sorry, sir. I happen to know Wing Commander Bresto at the Spares Depot. We were at Cranwell. Why don't you buzz off in a 1500 weight truck and I'll phone him? That's the stuff. This is, um. Call it, sir. And what do they call you? Harry, sir. Jolly good. Well, Harry, if you do the honors. What else? Um. We've collected our Anglo Polish phrase papers. Polish? Whatever will they do next? Not Polish, anyway. Swedish, I fancy. Good morgen. Yes, that's Swedish. I wish you'd told me. Now, if the Air Ministry can invade Sweden, what about shooting down Blenheims? Technical fault, apparently. 
We scrambled some blenheims to intercept Jerry over the channel. False alarm. None of the beastly hounds about. Coming back, our blenheims show up on our tracking screens. Looks like a raid. We scramble, and there we are. The old blenheims look remarkably like a Junkers 88. No, 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 sir. We met Junkers, and we were shot at. They thought you were Messerschmitts. What? The Spitfire does look like an ME109 from some angles. You're bloody knowledgeable all of a sudden. I've talked to the CO concerned. One Blenheim destroyed, one pilot killed. Some smart bod wrote down the letters of the attacking aircraft. If you could broach the other bottle of champagne, please, Harry. Yes, sir. Nobody's fault. Your letters? <clears throat> I'd, uh, I'd better get on. Uh, when you get back, could you get some of your chaps to obliterate the identification letters on the remaining aircraft? Why, sir? Well, we don't want to get caught again, do we? Thank you, Harry. Yes, sir. It will happen again. Happened all the time in the last two. Everything happened so quickly in the end. Oh, could you? This is Riley, our new squadron mascot. 300 hours airborne. Good thing to do. Hop into an aircraft and nip over to Manston. Oh, I suppose. Uh, Apologise. Apologise? They'll shoot me. Nonsense. The CEO's a charming man. What can I say? Flips on the screen. You were lucky they weren't. Off you go. But Christ, the man died. Well, I'm sure many more will. Off you go. And don't take all bloody day. We're off to France tomorrow. Go! You may never see him again. The Manston CEO's a Tartar. He was furious. Ah. Quite right, too. Uh, could you show me to my quarter? I really must have a bath. Well, gentlemen, we're going to France, over that way. I'm sure you're expert navigators, so there's no excuse for missing Le Touquet. A lively little place, with an adequate casino, and an excellent restaurant mentioned in your Michelin. As skipper of the crew, I should explain three things. The French think Get that off. the... As it were. Nobody kicks Riley, who was your mascot. He peed on me, sir. <laughs> he thought you were a lamppost. <laughs> As I was saying, the French think they invented flying, wine, and sex. A quick course in aircraft recognition might come in handy. They have some very strange aeroplanes. No matter how tempting they may be, please, please don't shoot them down. They're on our side. As for wine, the French are appalling alcoholics. If somebody offers you a drink, take it. You'll be doing him a favor. Sex, the ladies are staggeringly attractive. You are officers and gentlemen. If you must fornicate, at least take off your shoes and socks. <laughs> no questions, I hope. Good. Keep it tight. Keep it tidy. Off we go. Riley. Bit of a bright spark, isn't it? I think we're going to enjoy this war. A few errands, Uncle. When you've settled your bits and pieces, I want you to telephone Harrods and order some goodies. French beers like camel piss. Hundreds of bottles of whipped bread, some decent farmhouse cheddar, and lots of sausages. I like a good sausage. Uh, how shall I pay, sir? Put it on my account. They'll deliver. Now, my motor car, some type from the service corps, go to ferry the beast across the water. Is that possible, sir? Why have not? Chow of mine at the war office taking care of things. Keys. 
And, of course, Riley. He usually drives with me, but anything above 4,000 feet, he gets a trifle distraught. No scraps. Good marrow bone from the cookhouse. And Barton, sir? Barton. Is it a good and flag? Price of the collection, sir. Only good. God, I hope he's not going to pine. Will he be all right flying? Veteran, apparently. Will I be all right? Why not? Bombay freighter. A bit slow. Brute to fly. Is it safe? Really, Skull, wouldn't you have been happier in the army? Our town is your town. I am Lieutenant Jack Roca, and this is Captain Martino, who is your liaison officer. But unfortunately, he doesn't speak English. Oh, dear. Would you like to say a few words to the people? Ah, oh, yes. Yes. Monsieur le maire, mes amis, mon français épouvantable. Au nom de Squadron Hornet, je dis merci beaucoup. Maintenant, parlons en de la guerre. Nous sommes hit, Monsieur Hitler for six. I didn't realize French was just like English. Nous allons faire passer Hello. un mauvais quart d'heure à Hermann Göring et sa Luftwaffe. Vive la France, vive le Squadron Hornet, liberté, égalité. Fraternity. I don't know about you, Mon Mare, 
but a more serve your local brew might not be amiss. Brew? What is that? Poco vino, a bit of champagne. Oh, yeah. Certainly. <laughs> a charming speech, for the leader. Yes, we're off the cuff, you know. Terrific stuff, sir. I thought so. Your friend, the captain. Bit of a character. A very great hero. An ace during the last war. It looks like Basil Rathbone playing Adolf Monjou. I don't understand that. Not important. What happened to the rest of him? He had a big plane and a small bridge. Flew under a bridge? Not far. Jonville. Some said it could not be done. So far, the result is Pilots 1, the bridge 3. And um, Basil Rathbone? An honorable draw. Pilots are crazy. I was impressed by your air display. Piece of cake. Master Ghetto. Hmm. Sounds nicer in French. Navigating, Uncle? Absolutely. Just over the brow. Good gracious. Some Jewish banker. Left in a hurry. Not bad, eh, Uncle? Are we allowed to do this, sir? Picking out our own billet? I don't see why not. They're gonna move us anyway. In fact, the German border is only 40 miles away. Big library, squash court. Do you play, Uncle? Not all that well. There's a tennis court. Golf course? No, afraid not. Swimming pool somewhere. Will you take a look at the hangar, Mario, if there's a good chap? Yes, of course, sir. It's an odd one. Sort of chap you meet from the AA when you've got a puncher. He's very good. Sure. 
You think the chaps will like the billet, Uncle? What can I say? Enchanted? But how, sir? Our French aviator and liaison officer. Requisitionable, apparently. I hope they'll be grateful. It's not a question of gratitude. This squadron means a lot to me. I hope there's something special in the air and on the ground. I hope you approve, sir. The men seem to like it. I bloody well hope so, Rex. Well, of course, we're not quite settled in yet, but, uh, well. Uh... going to have a war, at least have a good one, eh? This way, sir. Gentlemen, Air Commodore Fletchley. Flight Lieutenant Galloway, the Grace. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Yes. Yes. Squadron, I have the honor to introduce Air Commodore Bletchley, who would like to say a few words about the war. Sir? We at the Ministry want to put you in the picture. People say that an Englishman's word is his bond. And we gave that word to Poland. So did France. But the Polish people have made an outstanding contribution to 20th century civilization by siding with Poland against the, well, let's call a spade a spade, the Hun, a traditional enemy of ours. We are standing for freedom, democracy, and justice. And it will also be the path of glory and eventual triumph. Yeah. The Air Commodore has kindly offered to answer any questions. <clears throat> I think you've covered everything, sir. No questions? Who's going to win the Gold Cup, sir? Not bloody Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here, sir. Well, I think we should start, don't you? I was wondering, sir, when Germany is defeated, is it the Allies' intention to restore Poland? I should hope so. And all her boundaries? Obviously. But it was only a year ago the Poles occupied the Teshkin area of Czechoslovakia. Will they keep that? The Poles? Yes. I'm not an expert on Czechoslovakia. All cobbled up by the politicos. 
bit of a potpourri. I mean, the nation. I mean, after the last show, they gave Czechoslovakia three and a half million Germans. Quite absurd. Hitler more or less said that. Skull. A flying officer skeleton was a Don's. Cambridge, wasn't it? My boy's going up there. And what will you read? God knows. Hoping for blue. Cricket. What was your speciality? Radical thought in Elizabethan England. Partly the influence of the Puritan sects in the northern counties. Remarkable. Yes. One hardly knew where to begin. And nothing about Poles and Czechoslovakians. I simply asked the Commodore to clarify these murky matters. How's your soul, sir? First class. And, of course, the Russians have also invaded Poland. We're not fighting about boundaries. Aren't we? Well, not completely, anyway. This war is about, well, decency and the Poles. Wonderful musicians. The Poles. Well, of course. Chopin and the others, very decent people. Beethoven. What? Oh, yes, I heard what you said. Well, just remember this. Poles don't beat up, well, Jews. Oh, but they do. Nonsense. Quite regularly. And with every sign of keen enjoyment. Rubbish. You hear, Sam? I'll say this to you, flying officer, Skelton. I've been in the service, man and boy, for 25 years, and I'll give you some advice. Never, never, never talk politics in the mess. I'll have some of that shabbly. Do you get to do much flying these days, sir? I miss that. On your own. Ever flown a sop with Pup? I'm talking about the last show. Swoop down on Flanders and you'd think of those buggers in the mud and the trenches. Barbed wire. And there you were. Free as a bird, eh? Don't mind telling you I miss that. I hope you have the same pleasure. I do, sir. Oh, yes, sir. I'm afraid I get vertigo. What are you looking at, Moggy? Old Adolf Monju, alias Long John Silver. Leave all that nonsense. Flying under bridges. Frogs are terrible liars. Sod. I'd like to see this bridge. I've flown to some power cables once, and a tiger moth. You could fly the Queen Mary sideways under power cables. It was bloody hairy. Pathetic Scotch dwarf. Good night. And I suppose we soldier on. Yes, I was going to ask you about that, sir. Soldiering on. The war, you mean? All that stuff about gallant Poland. Well, Poland's down the drain. The question is, will Jerry have a go at France? Waiting game. Be prepared, Rex. We've got the Maginot line, so we don't want to be, well, aggressive. Thank you, sir. Decent chap? Um, pilot officer Christopher Hart. The chap's an American. He sent me an American. What is this, the bloody Foreign Legion? Well, he's probably got some connection with our country. How do you know? They're not even in the war. They're not even friendly. Half of them are Germans. I didn't know that, sir. Well, it's true. Bloody Yanks, they're awful. Did you see that film? A Yank Goes to Oxford. Robert Taylor smoking a cigar, running the half mile, winning a boat race. I won't have him. Very experienced pilot, is he? 74 Squadron, Hurricanes and Spits. Bullet for him. Highly commended by Air Commodore Bletchley. Knows his family. I think it's probably a publicity stunt. You don't need publicity for a war. Not at the bloody Palladium. Come on, Harry. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Tighten up. Morning, aircraft. Red section. Attack. haven't gone sightseeing in Germany. Is that illegal? Of course. Some MP suggested the RAF should bomb the forests near the Ruhr. Mr Kingsley Wood, our Secretary for Air, answered this by saying, do you realise this is private property? Yes, well, I suppose it is. Afternoon, sir. Nice big fight. Bit early. Good day, sir. Yes. Pretty good. Hot engine. Can't grumble, though. Hope you don't mind, sir, but uh, any influence with the old man? Why? His dog, sir. You an animal lover? Not a lot. A bleeding Riley. A menace. Pissed on my leg, if you'll excuse my French. He's having to go at everybody. <laughs> <coughs> um, it's only the lower ranks, you know. Well, they always say that, sir. I've always been pissed on from a great height. Still, the pay's good, though. Oh, yes, sir. Can't grumble. Hello. I'm Christopher Hart. I've been posted here. As Walt, skiing instructor. <laughs> flying as well. I just saw some idiot fly under a bridge. Did you? Yes. Almost buzzed my taxi. That wasn't you, was it? You seem to be the only pilot around. Oh, they're practicing. So it really was you. Pretty damn good. Maybe magnificent. Really? You're not supposed to do that sort of thing, are you? Catamount. And they call me Moggy for some reason. <laughs> American? Yep. Drink? Love one. About the bridge, if you could keep it under your hat. Sure. 
How come you joined the RAF? I guess it was for the polo. We don't play polo. I get it. What would you like? I don't know. Half a bottle of Krug? Is that a bit presumptuous? I'm a simple peasant myself. Ah, you'll grow out of it. Pint of bitter old bean. Pint, Harry. Here they come. Any action? Not here, old boy. It's illegal in this war. Thank you. 